We perceive time as flowing in a linear direction from past to present to future. We also perceive time as flowing at a constant, steady pace, neither speeding up nor slowing down. But these notions are far from the true nature of time throughout the universe. People assume that time is a strict progression of cause to effect, but actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. As utterly absurd as Doctor Who's description of time may sound, it's actually fairly scientifically sound. There's nothing in the laws of physics that dictates that time must flow toward the future, or at a constant rate, or even flow at all, as discoveries over the last hundred years have shown. So what exactly is time? Well, that's something that our best and brightest are still trying to figure out. Despite the fact that it can easily be measured by the vibrations of cesium atoms within atomic clocks, we know far more about what affects time than what time actually is. Isaac Newton believed that time always ticked at the same rate everywhere in the universe. Later, Einstein discovered that time could actually run at different speeds, that time is experienced individually rather than uniformly. In other words, it's possible that two individuals could experience time passing at different rates relative to one another. Among Einstein's greatest discoveries was that motion through space can have a profound effect on the rate at which time passes. He figured out that time and space are an interwoven fabric that we are always moving through. If you're stationary and not moving through space, then all of your motion is through time. But if you hop on a train, then time for you will begin to slow to a very small degree as some of your motion through time is being diverted to motion through space. In 1971, this theory was tested as an atomic clock was flown around the world and then compared it to an atomic clock that remained on the ground. As Einstein predicted, the clock flown around the world did in fact experience a slowing of time relative to the clock on the ground. The two clocks only differed by a few billionths of a second, but this was enough to prove that Einstein's theory was correct. With the discovery that time and space were contingent upon one another, we now understand them to be two aspects of the same thing, a four-dimensional structure now referred to as space-time. Brian Greene, author and physics professor at Columbia University, likens the progression of time to a series of snapshots similar to how a film projector rapidly projects a series of frames at the cinemas to create a movie. In the same way that a movie is constructed by a progression of events being revealed frame by frame, the passing of time can be thought of as all events in the universe occurring moment by moment. He refers to each of these individual moments as a now slice. We could envision the entirety of the four-dimensional structure known as space-time as a loaf of bread. By stacking up each individual now slice, we could see all events in the universe from the Big Bang to the end of time. We would intuitively think of each now slice as being perfectly parallel to one another like a loaf of bread. But because motion affects the passing of time, we find that now slices can actually be cut at different angles, toward the past or toward the future. The direction traveled through space determines the direction traveled through time relative to different locations in space. To illustrate this, here's Earth. The green planet over here represents a hypothetical planet at the furthest reaches of the universe from us called Planet Z. At this very moment, somewhere on Planet Z, 
Alan the Alien is currently sitting on the john and apparently reading the latest publication of Popular Mechanics for some reason. Now suppose we hop on a rocket headed toward planet Z. Our now slice, while in motion, will be angled toward planet Z's future. And as our now slice now agrees with planet Z's future, we find that right now, on planet Z, Alan has been dead for hundreds of years. Conversely, if we left Earth headed in the opposite direction of planet Z, our now slice would be oriented toward planet Z's past so that now, Alan's birth has yet to occur for hundreds of years. We don't perceive motion's time warping effect on Earth because the effect is simply too minuscule, but across the vastness of space, the effect becomes much more significant. Brian Greene explains this much better than I can, so I'll leave a link to his video in the description below, but I strongly encourage you to watch it because it is absolutely fascinating. Now here's where I want to get philosophical. A rocket headed in the opposite direction as planet Z when our now slice is hundreds of years before Alan's birth, has run out of fuel and we are no longer moving. We could sit back and watch the hundreds of years worth of events unfold on planet Z that will lead to Alan's birth. Is Alan's birth, therefore, a future event that is set in stone? After all, we know that Alan existed when we left Earth, and if the astronauts of planet Z were to hop on a rocket headed in the direction toward Earth, their now slice would be in agreement with events on Earth that have yet to occur for hundreds of years. Would all of those future Earth events be set in stone also? And if time truly is an illusion with future events predetermined, then is choice also an illusion? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, so please comment below. Hey everyone, Drew here from Mad Cat Mysteries, and I hope you enjoyed the video you just watched. If you did, you can click on the subscribe button below. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.